nation's capital, but even George Bush knows the real power in this city is inside the MCI Center, where the undefeated Georgetown Hoyas look to tally another W against the Pittsburgh Panthers. a ticket to the inaugural ball, you've come to the right place. From the MCI Center in Washington, the Pittsburgh Panthers meet the 11th ranked and undefeated Georgetown Hoyas. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Picosi along with Doris Burke. Thanks so much for joining us on this very special evening in our nation's capital. Just seven hours ago in a powerful ceremony, only a few blocks from where we stand, we saw a change in administration. And Doris, we may be seeing a change in administration in the Big East. I know one thing, Craig Eshrick has a very impressive cabinet. For any administration in Washington to be effective, you need a couple of things, experience and a wealth of talent. Craig Eshrick has both of those things. And his point guard, Kevin Braswell, he has the experience and a player who's no longer playing with a converted two-guard mentality. He is playing with a pure point mentality. Having been a scorer, though, when he gets close to the bucket, he can flat out stick it. This, a late game shot against Seton Hall, which stemmed a run. In Mike Sweetney, 6'8 freshman, you've got a guy who's got great hands and is extremely effective around the bucket. He's a guy who, when gets close, makes plays, which is what they need. For Mike, Lee Scruggs, 6'11", power forward, but great finesse skills, outstanding range on his jump shot. And when he gets in the open floor, he finds people very effective. And then you have Demetrius Hunter, who last year was somewhat shaky when he had to handle the ball. No longer undersized, but his frame and his mentality make him effective when he gets close. He worked hard in his handle. It's proven effective. At 16-0, Georgetown is within two wins of equaling its greatest start ever. Can Craig Eshrick Hoyas make the Pittsburgh Panthers victim number 17? The starting lineups and opening tip are next. We as scientists don't believe things right off the bat. You always have to be seeking out what the truth really is. Research is the game here because if you can find things out other people can't, then you can act on them. When researching his personal investments, Dr. John Seeley Brown trusts CSFB Direct. That's because it offers access to six leading independent sources, all backed by one of the world's top research firms. Research is a way to actually get a competitive edge. People who know, know CSFB Direct. Your business can look better and run much more smoothly than it does right now. How? Because there's a better way to buy office furniture. We've opened a state-of-the-art showroom called Workplace Furnishings by Mount Lebanon Office Equipment, featuring the absolute best values in office furniture from Han and other fine brands at our famous low discount prices. Come in, look around, and get some ideas. Our interior design professionals will be glad to do a 3D drawing of your office space. It's new. It's exciting. It's Workplace Furnishings by Mount Lebanon Office Equipment, Banksville Road. Welcome, Miss Planet Contestant. Hey, Spear Man! Oh, it's the last one. Ladies, tell me briefly why you deserve this frost-brewed Coors Light. Because the silver can shines like a beacon of freedom. Mm. Like the first Coors Light, I am pure and also born in the mountains. Yes, you are. I deserve the Coors Light. Because I said so. We have a winner! She's the winner. The following public notice is an authorized inventory reduction of General Motors vehicles. January 15th through 31st, selected vehicles will be sold to the public at dealer invoice pricing. In addition, the buyer will keep all factory holdbacks, all rebates, and all special finance rates. Total savings can exceed $8,000. Selection includes Chevrolet cars, Chevy truck, Pontiac, Buick, GMC truck, and Oldsmobile. Final day is Wednesday, January 31st. Exclusive authorized location is the Don Allen Auto Complex, Bomb Boulevard, Bloomfield, 681-4800. Tonight's game is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by CSFB Direct. Invest online with CSFB Direct.
Welcome back to Washington in the first of two meetings this season between Pittsburgh and Georgetown. Let's check the lineups. First for Georgetown, we told you about the backcourt of Hunter and Braswell and up front Sweetney. Gerald Riley, another starting forward, and in the middle of the center is Ruben Boomche Boomche. And for the visiting Pittsburgh Panthers, Brandon Knight getting a start in the backcourt opposite Julius Paves, the center Isaac Hawkins. One forward is a boxist, and the other one darts is a young man who has established himself as one of the most versatile players in Pittsburgh history. Well, Ricardo Greer, six foot five, has the frame of a three guy, but has been at his most effective when he's scoring over bigger guys. If you look at his numbers over the course of his career, he's done a little bit of everything. He can score it, he can board it, he's a fine passer, and he plays on the defensive side of the ball as well. Everything Ben Howland could ask for, Ricardo Greer has given him. Greer playing with a sprained ankle suffered two games ago against Seton Hall seemed to bother him. He didn't shoot well Tuesday in Notre Dame. Boomche Boomche will jump it up along with Isaac Hawkins. Mike Kitts throws the ball up. He's working tonight with Fran Connolly and Patrick Driscoll and we're underway on inauguration evening in Washington and quickly a turnover. And it will be Panthers basketball. Well, I asked Ricardo just before the start of the game, how did the ankle feel? He's been limited in his practice minutes, but he said he feels great. It hasn't felt this loose in a while, so we'll see if that translate, translates onto the floor. And Gerald Riley getting the initial assignment of defending Greer. We'll see several players get a turn. Brandon Knight misses the three, and way up in the air for the rebound is Demetrius Hunter. Well, that's probably the area where Georgetown has excelled the most. They are plus 13 on the boards through their first 16 games. Down low, Boomche Boomche misses wide. Wildly, but Sweetney with the putback can't get it to fall, but he'll get to the line. Well, here's a guy who, according to Craig Escherich, he has not had a guy with as good a hands as Mike Sweetney since Craig Shelton. Uh, Georgetown Hoya fans will remember Craig. He could catch anything in traffic. And you see, they go to Boomche, Boomche early. He will not stick it. But here is where Georgetown hurts you. Bodies up front, and Mr. Sweetney has got quite a frame to go ahead and commit in there. Sweetney leads the Hoyas in scoring and rebounding, 12th best rebounder in a conference with many freshmen who are far more heralded than Sweetney Dars, but few are having the sort of season he's having. Well, he just put up solid numbers on both sides, and Georgetown has so many numbers, they can come at you with so many different guys. Everybody stays fresh. And the full court pressure, we see Georgetown, we expect to see it for 40 minutes, and it will really test the Panthers. Knight. Picks up the dribble way far from the hoop. Zavotskis, who fouled out Tuesday night at Notre Dame. This is Greer, defended by Riley. Hawkins at the top of the circle. Shot clock at 10. Knight wants Zavotskis inside, but he can't find him. Now he gets him down low. He's doubled and tripled. Greer for three. Got it. And they go four out, little one in situation, which should help spread the Georgetown defense. And Greer could stick it. He worked hard on those face up skills this summer. Greer went 25 minutes before getting his first field goal Tuesday night in South Bend. Pittsburgh fell behind 11-0 and never recovered. Yeah, now they show 2-3 zone, test the jump shooting ability, and Mr. Hunter with a quick answer. Demetrius Hunter with his 17th three-pointer of the season. Entered the ball game tied for second on the Hoyas with Braswell Anthony Perry, who comes off the bench, leads the team in three-pointers. Brandon Knight. His 11th start of the year. Down low, Hawkins spins, and his shot is blocked by Sweetney, who creates the held ball. Possession arrow aiming toward Pittsburgh. 15 to shoot for the Panthers. Well, you've got some athletes on this Georgetown team, and they've got excellent movement laterally, which is great for post defense. Sweetney in great position forces that block. On the right, Julius Page, he's doubled. Shot clock inside, 10 again. Knight right side to Page. Time running out. Throws up a wild long three. Rebound in the lane to Sweetney. Braswell passes off the dribble to the cutter Riley. And will get an offensive foul on the freshman from Milledgeville, Georgia. Ben Howland in his second season as the coach of the Panthers. Spent five years before that at Northern Arizona, he told me this week he was very disappointed at what happened at South Bend. We were coming off our greatest win of the season against Seton Hall, and I certainly didn't think we'd be behind 11-0 before I could blink my eye. Yeah, they did a great job against Seton Hall. They had to compete on the glass with Eddie Griffin, Dallin Bear, and they were able to do that. Knight defended by Braswell. 
Greer with his second three. No good long rebound to Page and a fresh 35 for the Panthers, but he doesn't use much of the 35. Well, good mentality, though, by Page. You like his aggressiveness. Quickly front court to Hoyas, who are 4-0 in the Big East. Into the post it goes, and a quick foul on Zavotskis. Craig Eschrick in his third season as the head Hoya, his second full year, of course, took over midway through the year two seasons ago when John Thompson stepped down. Boomche Boomche already has equaled his point total for Monday night at the Meadowlands when he fouled out. Yeah, if he learns to be effective with that dribble, he's got good quickness. He could just power dribble and go. He'll be very tough to stop. Zabotskis will throw up the three. Back rims it, rebound Hawkins, and thus far guards as Braswell gets called for the foul. The Panthers are settling for nothing but three. Yeah, well, there's one of the things you see early, too. On those threes, you get the long rebounds at Georgetown, as effective as they've been rebounding the ball. They're not stepping out and guarding shooters. You've got to go ahead and check at five positions. That three-point line changes college basketball in a lot of different ways. The Panthers just one for five from the floor in the early going. I like the mentality. When you've got a great shot blocker like Boomche Boomche, you've got to go at him. And, and Page, the freshman, did so the prior possession. Knight, right side, Page. Georgetown trying to trap the ball, and Boomche Boomche called for the foul from behind. That's his first and two on the hoyer. Well, they've shown a couple different looks now. Off dead ball situations, they're dropping into a 2 3 zone, but it's aggressive. They're almost matching at it. And Craig's team looking to trap in certain areas. So. Pittsburgh, they need to get by that initial trap and then find guys. Like that three fouls on the Hoyas. Knight to Greer. Kick out Knight, puts it on the floor. Finds Greer in the left and pays for a corner three. Got it. Yeah, good ball movement. You got to split the seams, and even if you don't get anything, you see how it changes the defense. It contorts to different shapes. They get a wide open J. That was pretty. Page with his team leading 21st three of the year. Penetrate, kick out, 300. Back rims it, but Hunter chases down the rebound himself. Pull up jumper. Yeah, he's playing with a poise that we didn't see at all times last year, Demetrius Hunter. Remember, he started to come on late for Craig Estrick, and it just has carried over to this year. So Hunter getting on the board early. In the lane, great penetration to Hawkins, but the shot is blocked by Boomche Boomche, and a quick foul from behind on Hawkins. They did everything he wanted to do against the pressure. They beat the trap and got a good look. That will bring us to our first time out of the evening, and it's 8-6 Georgetown. I'm Matthew Barney, and talking's a huge part of my game. That's why I choose Verizon Wireless, because now you can get a Verizon Wireless digital phone for $19.99 and a calling plan with 50 peak and 1,000 night and weekend home airtime minutes. That's a grand total of 1,050 minutes every month for only $24.99 monthly access. You'll even get two free Penguins tickets to a select game of your choice. Stop by a Verizon Wireless communication store today or call 1-800-2-JOIN-IN. Verizon Wireless, join in. McDonald's is going to wow you with two great deals. So outrageous, so fantastic, and so delicious. Our awesome cheeseburgers are only 49 cents each every Monday and Thursday. Wow! Every Sunday, bring the whole family for Chicken McNuggets. With 20 pieces, only $2.99. That's another wow. Now those are two delicious deals. At McDonald's, we love to see you smile. Cheeseburgers, 49 cents. 20-piece Chicken McNuggets, $2.99 at McDonald's. Wow! Succeeding on a basketball court, like succeeding in life, means taking advantage of good opportunities. At Summit Academy, you can take advantage of an excellent career opportunity by helping shape bright young students into successful young men. Summit Academy is looking for strong, qualified individuals to teach, train, coach, and counsel. To find out more, contact the Human Resource Department at 412-885-5200. Summit Academy, building a brighter future. Two, four and a half minutes in, Doris, the Hoyas do many things well, none better than rebound. Yeah, and they rebound from five spots. Their guard, Demetrius Hunter, is an excellent athlete, and he's got great quicks, and he goes after this basketball, good pursuit, and then when he gets close, his frame is outstanding, very strong, despite being just six foot two. 
There's a look at the sophomore from Las Vegas and a look at what Georgetown has done on the boards in Big East play. They've bludgeoned people. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. If Big East play, I mean, that in and of is, is speaks volumes. Plus 13. Remarkable. Oh, <laughs> <Roger> <laughs> Bonds Hunter, who got a backdoor cut to the hole for the alley-oop. I think that one was set up in the timeout. Oh, uh, yeah. Great <laughs> score off the timeout. Braswell pinpoint pass. Seven points in the early going for Hunter. Zavotskis to Greer, but Hunter gets a hand on it, and then Zavotskis will be called for the foul out on the floor, and already that's two on him and Darius. The Panthers are not deep. In fact, they're playing shorthanded tonight. Stevanovic not expected to play tonight because of a high ankle sprain. They can't afford to get anybody in foul trouble. Well, you talk to Ben Howland, and he just says, hey, you've got to play smart and at a high level, and off the timeout, Craig Eschrick sets a beautiful play, and Kevin Braswell, what a pass, and how about the ups on Demetrius Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> Same play, different angle, and that's a straight clear, and their bottom guys almost screen up and make that happen. Pick and roll, Boomche, Boomche draws the foul. Greer was on one side, on the other side was Chad Johnson, who replaces the Vatskis. And that will be number five on the Panthers. That's Craig Escherich. What is the biggest difference between this year's team and last year's team? And certainly his rookies, Riley and Sweeney, but he said it defensively. Our guys have committed to the system. And not only have they committed, they have the talent to play it. There's a depth, there's an attitude about Georgetown, which is remarkable. Substitution, and this is part of the depth. Anthony Perry, highly touted coming into the Georgetown program three years ago, made the Big East All-Rookie team. Now as a senior, doesn't start and seems to have accepted that role quite well. Well, he struggled shooting the basketball a year ago, and now with a comfort level coming off the bench, he's just concentrating on stroking it. And it's great to see him start to stick it a little bit. Perry leads the team in three-point field goals out of the much-heralded St. Anthony's High School program in Jersey City, New Jersey, the one which produced the Hurley brothers and Seton Hall's all-time career scoring leader, Terry DeHair. Braswell picks up his second foul on the reach -in. Yes, Coach Hurley has had a few players come out of St. Anthony's. Roderick Rose. Gary Walker, who was a teammate of DeHare and Danny Hurley at Seton Hall. You've got to be aware, when you put the ball on the floor against Georgetown, they get a, a foul there. But if you put it on the floor, you're going to have to get rid of it quick or know where you're going with it, because they'll make you pay if you don't. Braswell sits with two fouls, replaced by Trenton Hillier. Hillier, one of four walk-ons from the Georgetown football team. Rear pull-up. Long rebound will be run down by Boomche Boomche in the corner. Well, Craig Eschrick obviously likes what he sees in his 2-3 zone because he's been in it. They're primarily a man team. They will change looks, but he likes it. Boomche Boomche up top. Gives to Riley away from the play. Mike Kipps has a call. Three-second violation on the Hoyas. And we mentioned Lee Scruggs at the top of the telecast. He makes his first entrance of the evening, along with Matt Burton, 6'4", senior. When you think about what Georgetown has coming off the bench. Burton has started in his career. Scruggs has started in his career. Pittsburgh beats the... Oh, my God! The page goes up and over. Boom, Jay, boom, Jay. <laughs> Talk about ups. My goodness. He went up over a seven-footer. At the other end, Boomche Boomche shot is blocked by Big Tari Morris. Oh, you love Page's mentality. Went at the Boomche Boomche earlier in this ball game. Showed no hesitation there. This time he penetrates and gives to Morris kick out night for three. It'll go in and it's set up by the penetration. Okay, here's what they're doing against pressure, and you have to have this mentality. Most people say control tempo. Ben is going right at them. Traveling violation on the perimeter on Burton. Turnover number four for the Hoyas. You better come with the right mentality against Georgetown. I think the freshman Julius Page has got it in the face of Boomche Boomche. No doubt about that one. And the very next time down, he went right at the hole again, but set up the three by night. Now here's a little free quarter court pressure, so another different defense. Penetration by Knight, nobody home. It's a three on one. Burton's got help on the left, but Scruggs can't handle the low pass. Perry will reset the offense. Seven minutes gone by. We're all even at 11. Down into the post. Bad pass by Scruggs, and Boomche Boomche couldn't handle it. Yeah, now Scruggs is a fine pass. He just rushed that one a little bit. He saw Boomche Boomche posting up. A little bounce pass. One dribble, soft kick into the post. 
So Knight will walk it out of the backcourt. Ben Howland told me this week we need to handle their pressure. If we don't, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, I asked him would he try to slow the tempo. He said absolutely not. He said against pressure we want to attack it, and they've been effective thus far against it. Another three-second call. This time it will be on Howland's Panthers. Yeah, I don't think he wants to play full 94 all out every single possession, but when they get numbers, go after them. So with Braswell on the bench with the two fouls, Hunter is running the offense. Perry for three. Rebound in the lane to Morris, the big 6'11 freshman. Well, that's a straight set. They double screen for him, get the look they want. Knight penetrates. Kick out Greer for his second three of the night. Can't get it to fall. Rebound in the lane to Scruggs, and it's 6'11. Starts to break himself. Perry penetrates. No look feed to Burton. You see Georgetown's mentality is attack. Either make or miss. They're going to go at you full force. You've got to play transition defense against the Hoyas. Hoyas 5 2. We've played nearly eight minutes. Pittsburgh 2 and 3 in the Big East. Had a big win over then 15th ranked Seton Hall a week ago before losing Tuesday night at Notre Dame. Greer defended by Burton. Around the screen comes Page. Into the post. Great look from Greer, but Hawkins couldn't finish. Morris inside for the rebound. Yeah, you got to go at him with bodies up front. Morris does a nice job to go weak side and get position. So we're tied at 13. Hunter. Outside Scruggs. They want to go inside to Bimche Bimche, but there's Greer with the steal. He's fifth in career steals for Pittsburgh. That was the 180th of his career. When you talk about a guy who's played through some things. He's had coaching changes. He's had major injuries to deal with from other guys on his team. Suspensions. You name it. Greer has played through it. Great look from Knight to Greer with the up and under move. If you don't keep Brandon Knight in front of you, you're going to have a long night because the guy can flat out find people. Knight sixth in the Big East in assists and demonstrated why on that possession. 9-2 Panthers run. Scruggs for three. Long rebound and Greer chases it down in the corner. Knight will walk it up the floor. Knight had 24 points in one of the Panthers' two losses to Georgetown a year ago. The Warriors have won the last four meetings. Inside will get a hold call. This one will be called on Demetrius Hunter. That will be his first at five on the Hoyas, bringing us to a timeout. 10.32 remaining in the first half. Pittsburgh by two, and speaking of two, you won't see a more exciting one than this one. scientists don't believe things right off the bat. You always have to be seeking out what the truth really is. Research is the game here because if you can find things out other people can't, then you can act on them. When researching his personal investments, Dr. John Seeley Brown trusts CSFB Direct. That's because it offers access to six leading independent sources, all backed by one of the world's top research firms. Research is a way to actually get a competitive edge. People who know, know CSFB Direct. Hi, I'm Phil Mickelson. Everybody can use a good tip. Thanks, Phil. And I give my best tips only in Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the golf magazine. Information on equipment, the best places to play, easy to follow tips, and instruction from the best teachers and players in the game. Call 800-543-6200 and get your first issue risk-free. That's 12 issues for only $19.77, including this handy pocket tips booklet. Call right now and get this instructional video free. I'm telling you, it's the best tip you'll ever get. It's Pittsburgh by two, 10.32 to go in the half. Tonight's game is brought to you by Cooper Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. Now you watch Brandon. If you don't keep him in front, he'll turn the corner on you. He'll get where he needs to go, and then he's going to find guys, and he finds the right guy in Greer. And off the inbound pass, a quick three for Chad Johnson. My goodness. 
He must have got warmed up just looking the, <laughs> the warm up over his head on the floor quickly unleashes the three and all of a sudden Pittsburgh with a five point lead down low boom Che boom Che doubles Wesley Wilson is checked in for Georgetown left side three hunter rebound Perry rejected from behind by Jerron Brown Sweetney gets his own miss this time Wilson that's not fair yeah uh, just great jumpers great bodies and you play in two three zone if you're Ben Howland and the one thing you know about playing zone is your checkout responsibilities aren't clear he said, I want to play zone and challenge the jump shooting, but I know I might give up some boards. That's too many right there. Six shot attempts on that possession for the Hoyas. Greer gives to Knight. Right side ground. Greer in the lane. Then finds the big fellow Mars. Knocked away. Last touch by Hunter. 15 seconds left on the shot clock for the Panthers. So both teams showing some zone early. Knight trying to attack the zone with a shot clock down to 10. Johnson back out tonight. Good reversal to Brown, but he was stepping on the sideline. And Jerome Brown just trying to stay spread. You obviously come in with a good game plan for Pittsburgh. But <laughs> spread a little bit too far. Turnover number six for the Panthers. Georgetown ball down three, nine, 15 remaining first half. This the first of three straight home games for the Hoyas. Baseline drive Sweetie no good and rebound by Morris. It's his fifth. Now, never got a great angle and Morris has been outstanding off the bench. Knight gets the screen from Morris and then throws up the three. Weak side rebound Jerron Brown. Yeah, Brown, he's got a great physique and he's working against Perry weak side and just flat out out muscles him to the basketball. Hunter. Dribble penetration, nice dish inside the Wilson. Yeah, now Hunter really is going to take on the mentality of finding guys here. Last year, you talked to Craig Escher, he said, when I had to take Kevin Brazel out of the game, I would break out into hives. <laughs> <laughs> this year with Hunter, a little bit more control, he's in a little bit more of a comfort zone. Wilson with four quick points off the bench for the Hoyas. Worth counting the man-to-man. Johnson gets the screen from Mars. On the switch defended by Wilson, back door cut goes Knight. Yeah, I, I, they are just playing with a great mentality right now. They're poised Pittsburgh and they're attacking. You've got great shot blockers, so there's only one thing you can do, go after them. Five point Pittsburgh lead into the post it goes and Brown with the steal, but he couldn't save because he was standing on the baseline. Timeout, 7.57 to go in the first half and Pittsburgh with a five point lead over the nation's 11th ranked team. Three-point shooting, fast breaks, and slam dunks make your heart pound. Then get ready for Pittsburgh Panther basketball. Head coach Ben Howland has the Panthers poised to make their mark. Seasoned veterans and heralded recruits are ready to go full court against the top teams in the Big East. Great players, great games, great basketball. And best of all, great seats are still available. Catch March Madness early this year. Call 648-PITT for Pittsburgh Panther basketball. The design and performance are unsurpassed. They offer comfort, and best of all, this high-performance line uses up to 45% less fuel. The Lennox line of high-efficiency furnaces. Use Lennox high-efficiency products to save money on your energy bill this year. Check the yellow pages to find the Lennox dealer nearest you. Lennox, unparalleled savings, comfort, and performance. Adabas. Vikram show se hum aapka suhagir karte hain. Do khiladiyon ka naam Arun Dati aur Bharat hai. Agar ye dekho kya ho raha hai. Dono khiladi ab tayar hai. Wo ek dusre ke paas re aur yo It's Pittsburgh by five. Guards, what's that expression? If at first you don't succeed? <laughs> try and try again. Hunter, the miss. But watch the board work at Georgetown, something they've done all season long. That's their second opportunity. There's number three, Sweetney. He's playing pad the rebounding numbers four, five, and he finally gets one to go. Five boards make for six looks in one set. That's too many of Sweetney. 
you see in that set with a few of his own, Georgetown with six O boards already. Georgetown first in the Big East, second in the country in rebounding margin. Hunter in traffic. Oh. It's like a little comfort zone for your guard when they attack. Go ahead, put it up soft off the rim. You've got enough bodies to go and get it. Give them an opportunity to clean up. Nine points for Demetrius Hunter. Johnson on the right finds Page for three. His second three of the night, and Page has been a huge factor in the first 12 minutes. Yeah, and a smart play there. I mean, he loses Kevin Braswell, who's an outstanding defender. He just slides behind him. Braswell back on the floor after leaving with those two early fouls. The Panthers on the year are shooting 33% from three-point range, five of 11 tonight. Here's another three. Rebound in the lane off the hands of Brown. It's controlled by the Hoyas and a held ball. Crowd doesn't like it. Possession arrow aiming toward Georgetown. We are at the MCI Center on inauguration evening in downtown Washington, D.C. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Doris Burke. So glad you could join us on this very historic night in our nation's capital. It is Pittsburgh 25, 11th ranked Georgetown 19. We have 6.56 to go in the half. Riley thought he took a hit. Not a particularly good shot right there. Craig obviously wants to push. But if you're Riley, you better serve to go ahead and take a dribble out and get it back to Kevin Braswell. So Ron Brown defended by Gerald Riley. Pittsburgh has done it tonight with the three-pointer. 15 of its 25 points have come from three. Zavatskis back in after leaving with two early fouls. Page has eight points. Shot clock at 10 as Riley knocks it away. Now the clock at eight as the Panthers inbound. Page matches up extremely well athletically. He's got the speed, the jumps. He's got it all. Brown, left side, Zabotskis for three. Johnson with the offensive rebound. Then it's tipped off offensive interference yep. will be called on Isaac Hawkins. They're sending bodies to the boards, and with both Page and Brown, you've got guards who can rebound it. So Hawkins... Damascus, both solid rebounders, but other guards who can come in there. Georgetown leads the Big East in scoring. Pittsburgh leads the Big East in scoring defense. So far, they've held the Hoyas to 19 in the first 14 minutes. Braswell dribble drive by Johnson, penetrates, kick out three. Riley misses badly, Hawkins to the rebound. Brown in transition, deflected out of bounds with 30 on the shot clock. Wholesale substitutions, Knight, Greer, and Morris return for Pittsburgh, Burton, and Perry for Georgetown. Now, you get a better guy to handle the basketball in Brandon Knight back into the ball game. If he were in, that right there might have been two points, so. On the right, Page. Now around the screen comes Knight, penetrates, kick out to Page. Crowd wanted to travel. Knight lobs it into the post. Morris backing in on Wilson, and Wilson got a piece of it. Rebound knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Ricardo Greer. Yeah, good solid check out by Anthony Perry. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to have guys like Perry there who are willing to check out all over the floor. Your guy might start in the perimeter, but you got to keep your body on him as he attacks the glass. Braswell will walk it up the floor. Braswell, fourth of the Big East in assist, fifth in career assist at Georgetown. Baseline drive, Burton no good. Rebound winds up to Perry, kick out, Braswell three. It's almost like they're better off their second shots, Georgetown. I guess the zone, their jump shooting ability is being tested. It's when they've gotten second hooks that they've been effective against the zone. Kevin Braswell with his 17th three-pointer of the season. First points of the night for the preseason first team all Big East selection. And Ricky Greer is one of those also. Yeah, nice job to step to the open area. George, I think, was in the midst of switching defenses there. Greer does a nice job finding the spot. Greer has seven. The lead back up to five. Left side, Burton. Boomche, Boomche deflected out of bounds by Hawkins. 17 to shoot for the Hoyers. 
And here's where they could be dangerous. They run a little interior screen and lob it up for one of these guys. Instead, they go out on the wing, and it comes into the lap of Braswell. Long rebound comes to Isaac Hawkins, who's immediately fouled by Sweetney. Well, Hawkins, the red shirt last year, but remember, established himself early in his career as a great rebounder in conference. He's got great pursuit of the basketball. Eighth leading rebounder in the Big East sat out last year with a fractured tibia. Craig Esprit told me Pittsburgh's a completely different team with Hawkins back. Uh, it gives him an inside presence. Somebody who can go ahead and get your glass on both sides. Hawkins, third team all Big East selection two years ago and he was healthy. Page, right side night. On the dribble goes by Sweetney that hands off to Hawkins. Hits the bottom of the rim with the shot, but we'll get to the line. You see, I think as Brandon Knight gets a better and more consistent jump shot, he's going to be one of the more unstoppable players because his dribble penetration skills are outstanding. You know coming in, you've got to keep him in front. Georgetown with athletes still can't do it. On the help, he kicks it down, and you'd like to see Hawkins finish that, but nonetheless, some free throw opportunities. Isaac Hawkins. Entered the night needing 16 points to reach the 1,000 mark in his career. He has stayed healthy, has started all 17 games. There are his numbers on the year. He has already scored in double figures six times this year and has had four double doubles. Scruggs, Boomche, Boomche, and Hunter return for Georgetown. These two teams will meet again in a couple of weeks on February 5th in Pittsburgh. Oof, look at that number. Last, 59%. Mm. That's actually, believe it or not, an improvement because they've shot 65% in the last six games, yeah. only 56 in the previous 10. Mm. But Ben Howland says no question about it. Free throw shooting has cost us at least two games this year. Well, he lost to VCU, and if had they not free throw down, would have won it. Scruggs counted in the foul on Ricky Greer. How about this guy coming off to your bench? You sat out the first semester with some academic difficulties. Started for a good portion of last year. It's 6'11". He's a guy who could take you out. But if you elect to get him the ball close as he goes behind the defense on the baseline side, guess what? You are finished because he's got great size, the ability to adjust in the air. I mean, in essence, you have like six starters you're looking at for Georgetown. Maybe even more. Samnick, Burton, Perry, Scruggs. All these guys off the bench have started in their career. Scruggs, a preseason, second team, all Big East selection, who sat out the first semester with academic problems. Timeout, 3.50 to go in the first half. Ben Howland's Panthers trying to pull off the upset. He's caught up three. Fifty to go in the half. Now let's take a look at the Volkswagen Big East leaders. Kevin Braswell leading the conference stars and fifth in the country in steals. And the next two, Butler and Cook, are both freshmen. And you look all around the stats and you see steals. Kevin Braswell at 
number three, 228, a solid defender. Braswell would appear to be a mortal lock to eclipse that record before he scores. He still has another year of eligibility. Speaking of Braswell, nearly got another one. Settles for a deflection, then Knight changes pace on the dribble, but then loses the handle. Turnover number six for the Panthers. Left side, Hunter, and away from the play, a hold will be called, I think, on the big guy, Morris. He looked like he was escorting him to a dance. He had his arm around him the entire way. Well, there are just a few dances in this yeah. town tonight. It would be appropriate. And his attire is probably not up to par around this area. An incredible sight in Washington today, just outside the arena, a number of tanks. Yes. <laughs> Security is rather prevalent in this city tonight and was all, all day. Things except for the weather seem to go off without a hitch. A lot of visitors in town for the inauguration. A humbling experience to watch the transition of power in this country. Yeah, Georgetown is pretty good. Oh, you mean the other one? <laughs> I think as you look around the Big East and you talk to coaches about this Georgetown, the one consistent word that comes out of their mouth is, wow. <laughs> but how about the job Pittsburgh has done? You're coming with the right frame of mind and a great game plan if you're Ben Howley. He's done a good job. As his club up two with 3.20 to go, Knight will walk it across. Right side, Page. Defended by Braswell, who has two fouls. Around the screen comes Greer. Fake Savnick in the air, but Braswell knocked it away from beyond. Here's a four on two. Demetrius oh, Hunter. And Ben Howland quickly calls time to try to take this crowd out of it, but it may require more than that. Three minutes to go in the half, and we're all even at the MCI Center. Kevin Braswell with the steal, Demetrius Hunter with the finish. Looking into the bear's eyes, Tom fired. The bear didn't flinch. Welcome to Outdoor Life magazine, where for over 100 years, sportsmen have pursued the big ones, the tough ones, and the sheer enjoyment of the outdoors. Call now and get a full year of Outdoor Life plus two bonus issues and a free gift for just 84 cents an issue at 79% off the cover price. With thrilling graphics, Outdoor Life brings you the tips, the gear, and the expertise to help you get more game, more fish, more satisfaction. There's also a few laughs, big adventure, and special local coverage. Call now and receive this mossy oak rain jacket to keep you dry when the weather's wet. It's yours free and save 79% on a year of Outdoor Life. Call now and see what kind of outdoor excitement is waiting for you inside every issue of Outdoor Life. The Sportsman's Authority. Call 1-800-839-7700 to get Outdoor Life plus your free Mossio rain jacket for just $10. That's 1-800-839-7700. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers free consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Every month I pay our credit card bills. But the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced. And now the balances are dropping dramatically. Call 1-800-652-4500. Ameridad, helping America get out of debt. Three minutes to go in the half. Craig Eshrick's club was down five. They've caught up. This is Eshrick's 25th year associated with the Georgetown basketball program. Four as a player, 17 as an assistant coach. Yeah, Craig Eshrick wanted the turnover there. As you see, he's got a 9-3 run working now. And he might have had a point. Ricardo Greer looked like he came over the top of that ball. Hawkins. To Page and the shot clock at 10 for the Panthers. Page spins on Anthony Perry and shoots over him. 10 points for Julius Page. Yeah, he scored in a lot of different ways on penetration, on the long jump shot. And Hunter comes right back, then lost the handle just as he released it, but boom Jay, boom Jay there to clean up. No better way to go ahead and change momentum than when you get scored on, go ahead and go down the other end and get a quick look. Brandon Knight on the switch, picked up by Victor Samnick. It was the tenth different Hoya to see action thus far tonight. On the wing, deflected out of bounds by Anthony Perry. 19 to shoot for the Panthers. 
We've got a very long, athletic Georgetown team. They get their hands and passing lanes extremely well. Harry second on the Hoyas, 12th in the Big East in steals at 29, despite his playing only 15 minutes a game. Now the shot clock down to 10 yet again. On the right wing, it's Chad Johnson. Dribbles through the lane, kick out, Cage, ball fake, penetration, over Scrubs, missed the rim, but Sam Nick rebound. Hunter on the right for Scrubs, for three. Got it! Uh, on the floor right now, the one guy you got to make sure you find, even more so than Anthony Curry, is Lou Scrubs in transition. Job number one, stop ball. Job number two, max shooters. They did neither. Scrubs second on the Hoyas in three-point shooting percentage at 6-11. This is a 12-5 Georgetown run, giving the Hoyas a three-point lead. Page comes around the Hawkins screen. A solid down screen by Hawkins. He really should get an assist for that because that was pretty. 13 points for Julius Page on his third three of the night as we reach the one-minute mark in a very entertaining first half here in Washington. Scrubs again. Front rims it. Rebound juggled by Page. Well, this has been a great half of basketball. We've seen some spectacular individual plays, good team basketball. Kick out Hawkins tonight. Rebound off the hands of Scruggs to his teammate Samnick. Quickly Perry, pull up three. Scruggs trying to keep it alive, and he tips it in on the second attempt. That's nothing but length that gets in the board. 6'11 with a tremendous wingspan. He taps it almost to himself. He had six-foot Brandon Knight in front of him, and he turned out to be no obstacle. Shot clock off. Eight points off the bench already for Scrubs. At 14 for Georgetown, doubling up Pittsburgh already. Panthers want to play for a final shot. Now Knight alley -oop to Page down low, knocked away by Scrubs. Johnson, rebound at the buzzer to Sabbath. The fans here in Washington love their Hoyas. They're off to a 16-0 start, and they've come back from a five-point deficit to take a two-point lead at intermission. It's Georgetown 35, Pittsburgh 33 at the half. In a moment, we'll check out-of-town scores in the Big East. Helping to realize our brightest hopes for the future. Forging better lives through research. Working creatively to develop human potential. The University of Pittsburgh. You've impressed her with the flowers, the outfit, the car, the job, and the witty repartee. Don't let her down now. The Post-Gazette. More restaurant reviews, more substance. I'm Jim Rome. Next week on The Last Word is Super Bowl roadie to Tampa. And my guests will include NFL MVP Marshall Falk, perennial Bucks Pro Bowler Warren Sapp, and the tuna, Bill Parcells. The Last Word, weeknights at 11.30 on Fox Sports Man. Get some help. Call Labor Ready at 1-800-24-LABOR or go to laborready.com. Labor Ready. We sweep. It's a celebration event all year at Damon. It's been 20 years of award-winning ribs in the atmosphere that's made Damon's famous. Check out Damon's new menu with a variety of choices to please the whole team. It's like a furnace up in this mug. Jamie Fox. Burning up. It's hot enough to make a cool brother sweat. Let me get a cool as light. Cool as light. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! Get it now! Oh man, you're so pretty. I think you tell that to all the girls. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Who's like? You're watching Fox Sports Net. Hey, thanks for robbing me on that last trade, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Nothing without your wife. <laughs> I won't change, man. <laughs> There's one thing that winners of fantasy football wouldn't trade for anything. 
The Post-Gazette. More sports, more substance. It's NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. Oh, yeah! You should get up and hang out with us because we're going to have a little bit of fun. It's Sunday morning chalk talk and trash talk. <laughs> I like the hair today, Chris Myers. You look a little like Bob's big boy. <laughs> Tomorrow at 10 on Fox Sports Net. Now Pittsburgh has a nightly sports report dedicated to hometown teams, home team highlights. It's 30 minutes of nightly sports news dedicated to your teams. The 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report, Pittsburgh edition, nightly at 11. Welcome back to the MCI Center in Washington, where it's Georgetown 35, Pittsburgh 33 at halftime. I'm Bob Picozzi. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday night. A very busy Saturday in conference play in the Big East. This is the last of five games on the schedule. Earlier today, St. John's at home beating Villanova by 12. Big game for Anthony Glover. Providence goes on the road and wins at Virginia Tech. Rebounding nicely from a home loss to Miami early in the week. Boston College drills Rutgers. Scarlet Knights still winless in the league. And Miami at home with its second straight win. That means three straight losses for Jim Calhoun's UConn Huskies. And coming up on the schedule tomorrow, Notre Dame at home against West Virginia. Mountaineers coming off a buzzer-beating win against Rutgers the other night. And Syracuse at the Meadowlands tomorrow afternoon in a big showdown in the Big East West. Let's check the standings. Start with the East, Boston College and St. John's with the wins today. Remaining tied for first, Villanova slips a game behind. Providence also a game back. And over in the Big East West, some familiar names in Big East history. Georgetown and Syracuse at the beginning of the Big East dominated, and they share first place in the Big East West at 4-0. It's halftime between those Georgetown Hoyas and Pittsburgh. In a moment, we take a look at a great football player who's leaving the Big East. When it comes to learning, there's no limit through one's hopes to one's ambitions. The key to it is a really old Jesuit idea, and that is that study is always to produce results in the world and for the sake of the world. Georgetown University, a home for scholarship, faith, I'm Matthew Barney, and talking's a huge part of my game. That's why I choose Verizon Wireless, because now you can get a Verizon Wireless digital phone for $19.99, and a calling plan with 50 peak and 1,000 night and weekend home airtime minutes. That's a grand total of 1,050 minutes every month for only $24.99 monthly access. You'll even get two free Penguins tickets to a select game of your choice. Stop by a Verizon Wireless communication store today, or call 1-800-2-JOIN-IN. Verizon Wireless. Join in. It's been a record year at Barrel Toyota in Cranberry, but Pittsburgh's fastest-growing Toyota dealership still has the last of the 2000s. 2000 Camrys with power starting from $17,999. 2000 Forerunner 4x4s, power sunroof, CD, and more from $28,999. And 2000 Tacoma 4x4 trucks, the last of the 2000s, starting from just $16,999. Barrel Toyota, now two locations, on Route 19 in Cranberry and on the web at barrel.com. Look you, his first shot on goal, and he scores! Joseph, oh, what a shot by Lemieux! Oh, Michael, Michael, motorcycle. Top the press, what a move by Lemieux! And then he scores the hat trick! Oh, great ball to five! Lemieux gets the go-ahead goal! The Stanley Cup has come to the city of Pittsburgh! Elvis has just left the building. Mario Lemieux, his first goal in his comeback here tonight at the Mellon Arena. And you'd have to be here to believe it! For half a century, Heffron Tillotson has been building retirement wealth for their clients. At Heffron Tillotson, we realize that fads come and go. That's why after five decades, we still believe in a solid, long-term investment approach personalized to meet your financial and retirement goals. Let our team of professionals prepare and implement a custom master plan for you. Call Heffron Tillotson today for your no-obligation personal evaluation between Pittsburgh and Georgetown. Welcome back to Washington. I'm Bob Picozzi. One of the most electrifying athletes ever to burst on the college football scene has decided to make the jump to the NFL. This after only two years at Virginia Tech. Pay close attention to the following. Only two words can explain it. Michael Vick.
And in two years as quarterback at Virginia Tech, Vic passed for 3,500 yards, completing more than 55% of his passes. Also rushed for 1,300 yards, more than five yards to carry. The epitome of instant offense, 40 career touchdowns. He could very well be the number one overall pick in this year's NFL draft. A shortened but memorable stay in Blacksburg for Michael Vick. It's halftime between Pittsburgh and Georgetown. In a moment, Doris Burke rejoins me with a look at first half highlights and stats. financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead. Subscribe now and you'll also receive this Barron's stock evaluator free. It lets your computer help you turn money into wealth. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and the stock evaluator all for only $39. Call now toll free 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. to think about their power. Words can be encouraging, supportive, and understanding. Words can lift your spirit and make it soar. But words can also be destructive, devastating. If you tell a child he's bad or stupid, he'll probably believe you. So tell children they're good and smart, caring and loving. And you know what? They will be. I'm here for the checkup. Bring your transmission to AMCO. Get a comprehensive annual transmission checkup. Call 1-800-GO-AMCO to schedule yours. Bring your car, too. If three-point shooting, fast breaks, and slam dunks make your heart pound, then get ready for Pittsburgh Panther basketball. Head coach Ben Howland has the Panthers poised to make their mark. Seasoned veterans and heralded recruits are ready to go full court against the top teams in the Big East. Great players, great games, great basketball. And best of all, great seats are still available. Catch March Madness early this year. Call 648-PITT for Pittsburgh Panther basketball. Your business can look better and run much more smoothly than it does right now. How? Because there's a better way to buy office furniture. We've opened a state-of-the-art showroom called Workplace Furnishings by Mount Lebanon Office Equipment, featuring the absolute best values in office furniture from Han and other fine brands at our famous low discount prices. Come in, look around, and get some ideas. Our interior design professionals will be glad to do a 3D drawing of your office space. It's new. It's exciting. It's Workplace Furnishings by Mount Lebanon Office Equipment, Banksville Road. It's halftime with Georgetown leading Pittsburgh 35-33. Welcome back to the MCI Center in Washington. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Dars Burke. And really not the sort of first half I expected, Dars. You figured Georgetown would press and trap and force the Panthers into a lot of turnovers, but Pittsburgh turned it over only seven times. Well, you like their mentality. They were in attack mode from the get-go, and when you have a team athletically like Georgetown has, you've got to go at them, and they did. Georgetown did control the backboards. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. We saw some sensational play out of each backcourt. Well, the youth and athleticism is incredible. Hunter from Braswell, great find. And you had Julius Bay flat out attack Buche Buche and leave that one in no doubt. And you talk about defensively, you're talking about Kevin Braswell and your steals leader and somebody who could flat out turn it the other direction, find guys and Hunter. If both of these guys were number one, I give them 10 on all their ducks, but Page was huge, 13 points in the first half. He did it in and out. It all adds up to a two-point lead at the half for the Hoyas as we look at the first half statistics. And no surprise, Georgetown, as they do against everybody, controlling the board. Yeah, and Pittsburgh shooting the ball 6 of 14 from three-point territory. 18 of their points coming from behind the arc. They did a nice job finding guys in the right spots. Georgetown 16-0. 
trying to make it 17, trying to make it 5-0 in the Big East. Will they do it? Back with the start of the second half from Washington after this. <laughs> drive available on the 3 Series sedan and sport wagon. Test drive a BMW with all-wheel drive at your local BMW center. We as scientists don't believe things right off the bat. You always have to be seeking out what the truth really is. Research is the game here because if you can find things out other people can't, then you can act on them. When researching his personal investments, Dr. John Seeley Brown trusts CSFB Direct. That's because it offers access to six leading independent sources all backed by one of the world's top research firms. Research is a way to actually get a competitive edge. People who know, know CSFB Direct. Par, par, birdie, whoa, par, hmm, must be a Golf Magazine subscriber. Call now for your free trial issue and learn how to shave three, four, or five strokes off your game. Add 20 yards to your tee shot, improve your short game, shoot lower, and play the best golf of your life. Call now for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $19.97. Plus, get this terrific golf magazine gear bag free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-848-9339 now. Back in Washington, a look, a nighttime view of the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial in the background, and in the foreground, the famous Marine Monument commemorating the U.S. victory at Iwo Jima. 35-33, Georgetown with a two-point lead over Pittsburgh at halftime. And Garson in talking this week to Craig Eschrick, I asked him, did you think in your wildest dream you'd be 16-0? He said, I knew we'd be good, but no, I didn't think we'd be 16-0. And uh, you see the leading scores, the balance on the Georgetown side, 100 with 11 page with 13. He's reluctant, Craig Eschrick, to compare it to the great defensive teams in the past. Certainly Gene Smith-led defensive teams because they were so successful in the tournament, those teams back in the 80s. But certainly the depth and the attitude of this team, as you see the scoring off the bench in these Big East games, has been sensational. Georgetown's average margin of victory this season in all 16 games has been 20 points. I think you've got to credit Pittsburgh and their first half game plan because against the traps of Georgetown, they handled it well, and Ben Howland came in with a great game plan. And Let's think about this, folks. It's been 16 years since Georgetown led the Big East in scoring. They average just under, or about 85 points a game, Craig Eschrick's team, but they're held to 35 in that first half. So Pittsburgh did all the things you need to do to beat this Georgetown club. And we'll it, was, it was 16 years ago, yes. Garz, that the Hoyas had their greatest start ever, 18-0, only start better than this one, and that was a Georgetown team which was the defending national champion and was stunned by that remarkable effort by Villanova in the NCAA championship game at Rupp Arena. Oh, and I was a huge Georgetown fan then. So that was when Villanova and Roley Massimito spread the floor and made it that half-court game. Oh. Villanova shot 70% in the yeah. second half that night and won a squeaker. That's what it took to beat that Georgetown club. Eddie Pinkney, Dwayne McLean, Gary McLean. That team had a perfect game plan. Georgetown had a pretty good guy in the middle, as I recall. Mr. Ewing, of course, that was Patrick Ewing's senior year. Now, there's something wrong with the basket at the left end. Now, you recall that Paige dunked. Oh, that, I see. I think there's something hanging from the basket. Is that one of our mics? Yes, it is. <laughs> Big Brother not only sees and hears, we're everywhere. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if you're taking a shot and you hit that, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're, you're aimed a little low. Yes. Ben Howland's club with the ball to start the second half. Down to Zabotskis. Comes to Hawkins on the right, Zabotskis. Page with those 13 first half points around the screen comes Greer. 
Zabotskis gets a heck of a screen from Greer. That's some solid patience against the man-to-man. -man. You've got to work your sets through. Make Georgetown play the full shot clock. Don't turn it over early and make him defend. At 6'8", Zabotskis leads his team in three-point shooting percentage. He's 50% for the season. And they stay in that 2-3 zone, Pittsburgh. Braswell right side to Hunter who had the big first half. Hunter throws up a three, no good. Rebound, Boomshay, Boomshay deflects to his teammate Riley. Yeah, see, Georgetown was effective against the zone only when they got second shots in that first half. If Pittsburgh could do a better job checking out, they'd be in better shape. Sweetney. High post, Boomshay, Boomshay. And he threw a nice pass to Patrick Bristol. Unfortunately, Patrick's wearing a striped shirt. <laughs> Ruben saw something out of the corner of his eye, and I, I'm just assuming he thought it was a teammate. Boy, that brings back shades of Fred Brown. That was the oh. 82 NCAA final. Yeah, I love John Thompson's reaction after the game. Went right over to him and hugged him. Zabotskis, ball fake. Rear up top, stripped by Riley, but real great hustle to get it right back. Shot clock at 10. Zabotskis wants Hawkins in the post, can't find him. Instead, tonight, baseline, up top, Greer, shot clock at 2. Greer with a tough shot, rebound, Rubin. Up the floor goes to Braswell. Braswell penetrates, dumps down low to Sweetney, and Sweetney tips it up once then twice. Zabotskis upset with himself for not putting a body on. See, Sweetney, after he shoots it, you better go and find it, because he's got great instincts around the bucket. And right after that possession, guards Ben Howland pulled an index card out of his pocket, wrote something down, and put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> something like box out, would you? Knight, great penetration, loses the handle, tries to give to Hawkins. Then inside, Greer finds Hawkins, taken away by Sweetney. Yeah, see, George, I'm sure Craig Escher told his guys, when Brandon Knight gets in the paint, stay home. He's not big enough to score over you. Don't go for the fakes. Down low, Boomche Boomche has a big size advantage on Zavatskis, but can't make the shot. Yeah, that's where he's got to be effective, because Zavatskis wants to take him away from the bucket on the offensive end. Boomche Boomche has got to make him pay for his lack of size inside. Ben Howell just made another notation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be at practice in Pittsburgh tomorrow. Page left side jumper, no good. Freer with a great rebound effort. Nah, I mean, six foot five, with excellent instincts. He simply can handle guys inside nine points for Greer the senior from New York City Braswell long free rebound inside Boomche Boomche taken away by 6'8 Zabotsky yeah, I said if there's one weakness he said there are times when we revert to last year's shot selection that one with Braswell 25 ticks Bob you got to be able to get a better shot Knight defended by Braswell his pass nearly stolen by Sweetney. Greer with the ball fake pull up left side jumper. Gets the roll and Ricardo Greer for the 75th time in his career is hit for double figures. Yeah, he's a savvy guy. You, you love Biggie seniors because they know how to play the game. And he just nice up fake to sell the defense. Boomche, Boomche, foul on jumper over Hawkins. Rebound Greer. Uh, two straight sets and his shot selection's poor. That's exactly what Craig was talking about. Ahead to Hawkins who runs the floor. I think you need a timeout because you haven't gotten a couple of good looks. Your guys aren't focused. Craig Estrick keeps pointing to the bench and then using his thumb. Get in, get in, get in. He did it twice. Scruggs will come in. And so will Matt Burton. Scruggs was huge off the bench in the first half. You know, it's nice when you can deal with a position of strength off your bench, which Craig has afforded an opportunity to do because of the talent. But you like how Pittsburgh is attacking them. Hawkins, the drive and the dish. The up fake sells the defense and put it up nice and soft. Ricardo has worked real hard on his outside jump shot. And hey, Brandon Knight, you run the floor, the kid's going to find you. He's got excellent sight. And he gets Hawkins the basketball where he needs it. Hawkins, good patience to go ahead and fake the defense. You mentioned, Darcy, you thought Brazil was a little quick on the trigger on that three-pointer a few, few moments ago. Craig Estrick said, I asked him, what's been the difference between this year and last year? He said, shot selection, the addition of Sweetney and Wilson have dramatically improved our rebounding. And he says, and Kevin Braswell's decision-making, yes. that shot notwithstanding, no. Braswell has been a completely different player this year. Now, the shot selection was a topic of that timeout. There's not a doubt in my mind. 
inside the sweetening. Oh, Camped out in his home office. Yeah, Greg is, he's, you know, his comfort level with being a basketball coach now, as you said, it's coming around. It's his team right now. That ends a 7 0 pit run. Three points, Panthers lead. Right side page. What a screen Hawkins set. That's a couple times Hawkins has gone ahead and made solid screens. You don't get an assist, but Hawkins, that's good team basketball. Fourth three pointer for Julius Page. Braswell trying to attack the zone. Biggest lead of the night now for the Panthers at six. They were up five earlier. They can't answer this 2-3 zone, Georgetown. They're being very passive against it. Knight finds Greer. Burton in off the bench to defend Greer. Right side page gets the screen from Zabatskis. Weak side rebound, Burton. Hands to Braswell. Poked away by Knight. He'll get called for the foul, and Ben Hallen doesn't like it at all. Wow. Second foul on Knight. Timeout, 14.50 to go in the ball game. You're watching Big East Basketball. It's a celebration event all year at Damon. It's been 20 years of award-winning ribs in the atmosphere that's made Damon's famous. Check out Damon's new menu with a variety of choices to please the whole team. Hi, my name is Joe Androstic, sales manager at Sandal Motors, Route 30 East in Greensburg. For years, we've been telling you if you buy a Buick Rolls Mule someplace else, you'll pay more money. Well, the same holds true as it has in the past. We sell Buicks and Oldsmobiles at the lowest bottom line prices you'll find anywhere. So there's no reason to wait for year-end clearance sales, factory promotions. Your best deal, excellent customer service can only be found right here at Sendell Motors. So remember, if you buy a Buick or Oldsmobile someplace else, you'll pay more money. I'm Stephanie Gavis. Coming up tonight on your 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report, the Panthers look for their first Big East road victory against Georgetown. And there was a Bill Cowher sighting in Alabama. We'll tell you what the Steelers head coach was doing there. Plus, we'll have part five of our Steelers series, The Pain After the Glory. So for 30 minutes of sports, 100% dedicated to Pittsburgh home teams, stay tuned for the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report tonight. Pittsburgh trying to be the first team to put a blemish on Georgetown's record. Team basketball is helping them get the, basket, the lead right now. Isaac Hawkins, a second solid screen he sets. Now watch. Why does Julius Page get an uncontested shot? Because he has a solid screen from his teammate. And you talk about Ben Hallen and his success at Northern Arizona, where they are always in the tops in field goal percentage. You see Pittsburgh in the second half, five of eight. He does a nice job with his offensive system, Ben Hallen. And they're coming off their worst shooting night of the year at Notre Dame, 31%. Down low, Sweetney. Foul will be called. If it's Zabotskis, it will be his third, and it is. Number two on the Panthers this half. That gets Morris up and off the bench quickly. Yeah, Zavaskis will have to sit. Morris gave him solid minutes in the first half. Uh, yeah, five rebounds and limited playing time in the first half. Off the inbound, somebody didn't guard Perry. You have to find the shooter to be one of them. Yeah, uh, Brandon Knight got screens and Julius Page. If you're Knight, you got to fight around it. And if you can, it's up to your teammate to go over and help you out. So just like that, the Hoyas cut that lead in half. Georgetown 4 for 16 from behind the arc tonight. Hawkins up high. Finds the cutter, Greer. Greer inside to Morris. Uh, just great five. We talked about his versatility at the top of his telecast, Greer. I mean, he does so many things for this basketball team. All set up by Hawkins on the perimeter. In hockey, they give you two assists for a goal. They ought to consider that on baskets like that. Mm. Rebound baseline, Sweetney. <laughs> Look at Lee Scruggs go unchecked for the putback. Well, George said you find shooters. George said you better find the rebounders as well. Uh, ten points for Scruggs, and that gets the crowd alive. Grabs well with the steal and hand off to Perry. A Georgetown team that feeds off their defense. Uh, because they're not scoring, it hasn't been able to get them in their full court pressure, their traps. Now they're starting to get to it. 
And the crowd is on its feet and deafening here at the four-year-old FCI Center. Braswell nearly took it away again. Morris tonight penetrate, kick out, hey. Tonight on the left. Shot clock at 10 and a bump on the perimeter. This one will be called on Gerald Riley. You played 24 seconds of great defense, and then your freshman goes ahead and makes a little bump on the perimeter. That's tough. Knight to inbound, finds Greer. Out the page at midfoot. Four count four and zero at the MCI Center this year. Nine and zero overall at home. They played their first five games on campus at the Gunner Arena. Page finds Hawkins. He's doubled. Knight oh. down low to Mars. He couldn't catch it. Kick out Page for three. Rebound. Greer deflects it to himself with a great effort. Right side wide open look. Isaac Hawkins. Pittsburgh worked hard for that too. Yes, they did. Second chance opportunity created by who else? Ricardo Greer. Braswell quickly at the other end loses his footing and is called for the travel. Turnover number nine for the Hoyles. Garris, I remember being here last year in the final game of the regular season against Notre Dame. And to contrast the atmosphere, the energy level in this building tonight to that game is staggering. Mm. This 16-0 start really has the people in Washington excited about this game. Amazing what a little winning will do for you. And Craig was talking before the game about the fact that the students are back. And the fact that they have to be hungry to see this team. Oh, what a day for some folks. You go see a president inaugurate in the afternoon and then you see a heck of a Big East basketball game at night. Combining for the steal, Samnick and Burton, who returns the favor. Samnick misses the shot, but Burton does it. Wow, he took a bump. Thunder should have been at the free throw line, too. Good solid play, but that's Big East basketball. That six-point Pittsburgh lead is down to one. Eight minutes gone, second half. Brown. Double. Finds Hawkins. Morris is open inside. They couldn't get for it. Now it's Page on the dribble. By Perry shoots over. Rebound baseline. Pulled down by Scruggs. He's been absolutely magnificent off the bench. Five rebounds for Lee Scruggs, the senior from Franklin, North Carolina. Panthers stay in the zone. Samnick may have forced that one. Yeah, see, when they're scoring, Bob, it's been off turnovers. It's been off their defense. They're still not that comfortable yet against this 2-3 zone that Pittsburgh is showing. And Knight is getting arrested. Brown plays the point, and he's called for the charge. Yeah, I think it's got to be a brief blow for Knight. He's too good a decision maker. First foul on Brown, three on the team, and that will bring us to a timeout. 11.06 to go. You're watching Big East Basketball. Succeeding on the basketball court, like succeeding in life, means taking advantage of good opportunities. At Summit Academy, you can take advantage of an excellent career opportunity by helping shape bright young students into successful young men. Summit Academy is looking for strong, qualified individuals to teach, train, coach, and counsel. To find out more, contact the Human Resource Department at 412-885-5200. Summit Academy, building a brighter future. My elevator's out. I walked up. Another scorch. It's hot. High of 95. Come on, it's too hot to play games. Oh, come on. You're getting warmer. You're getting hotter. You're burning up. You're getting colder. You're getting colder. You are freezing. Coors Light. Frost brewed at the edge of freezing. You're an iceberg. Smile. At McDonald's, every order is made hot, fresh, right to order. So I'm not just making a burger. I'm making your burger. It's hot, it's new, and it's delicious. It's McDonald's new grilled onion double cheeseburger. Two all-beef patties, melted American cheese, and sizzling hot grilled onions done to perfection. We love to see you smile. Try a grilled onion double cheeseburger today at McDonald's. 
Georgetown has cut a six-point Pittsburgh lead to one. Well, they will wear you down with the bodies they come at. Perry with the miss. But offensive rebounding has been their calling card. Sweetney the miss. But Scruggs, no sir, will not miss off that one. Scruggs, 10.5 boards. Another miss. But Burton, the putback attempt, takes the body, still able to score. And when you deal to your bench and you come in with guys like Scruggs and Samnick, it really makes the complexion of the ball game so much different. 20 second chance points, fresh bodies, fresh legs, fresh rebounders. Georgetown had 59 rebounds in a game earlier this year against Rambling. That's tied for the most by a Big East team this year. Out of the timeout, Braswell, long three. Uh, inside out against the zone. Go in, force the defense to suck into the paint and then kick out. Second three of the night and 18th of the season for the junior from nearby Baltimore. And it's given Georgetown the lead thanks to a 12-4 run. Out of the timeout as expected, Knight back in to play the point. Greer misses the shot, Zabatskis on the rebound. And a foul will be called on Scruggs. That's his first. He's upset with himself. He certainly has got the length to be a good shot blocker. If Greer finds a way to lose the freshman Riley momentary, pretty good look. And it's Zavascus' ability to get to the glass. You see Scruggs. <laughs> he left that one in no doubt. I mean, don't give him an opportunity for three points. Zavascus coming off a nightmare effort Tuesday night in South Bend. Fouled out in 21 minutes. Scored just three points. But two games ago, a week ago today, and the biggest win for Ben Howland since coming to Pittsburgh against Seton Hall, Zavascus had... A season high 17 points and he was letter perfect in the line. Yeah. Seven seven. He's their best guy. 82% of the season. So that will quiet the crowd at least for a moment. Dead even at 51. 10, 15 remaining. Right side Perry. Up top glass well. Penetrates and falls for trap. Uh, they're trying to work the short corner and then kick out. Pittsburgh is trying hard to get down and then recover the shooters. Burton returns for the Hoyas. And so does Victor Samnick as Riley and Sweetney sit down. The full court pressure really hasn't bothered the Panthers much. No, you know what? Craig Eschrick hasn't used it that much because early on in the game, remember, Pittsburgh attacked it and got some easy buckets. That's the way to make them take it off. Here. Dribble, kick out to Zavatskis. Down low, ground, baseline, comes around the other end and lays it in. Well, outstanding patience again, work the shot clock. That was with seven ticks. Excellent patience, they're penetrating north to south. They're doing all the things you need to do. Round coming off a career high 12 points against Notre Dame. Right side three, Anthony Perry. Perry goes way up in the air, can't control the rebound. Instead, it's Isaac Hawkins. Sixth rebound for Hawkins, who's eighth in the Big East in that department. Two-point Pittsburgh lead with 9.15 remaining. Zabotskis feeds down low Greer. Rebound batted around, controlled by Burton. Ahead to Perry, tough catch in traffic. Braswell with no look feed inside, but Scruggs finally misses a shot. Here's Greer ahead of the field. He talked about his versatility. Can rebound but on one end, can run the floor on the other. And Georgetown's going to use another timeout. 13 points for Greer. Craig Estrick will go to the bench yet again. So what Pittsburgh's been effective doing in this half is they're trying to penetrate north to south, Bob, and that forces the defense to collapse. And Zavaskis goes, he doesn't get anywhere. Jerron Brown makes himself an option. Then he uses a dribble to get himself a good angle on the bucket. That's a pretty play right there. And again, good use of the shot clock. Here's the miss. And you have to do a better job checking out in the second half of your Pittsburgh. Ricardo Greer, his versatility. Six foot five, boards it, runs the floor, can finish with a body on him. A week ago today, Greer did not practice the day after spraining an ankle against Seton Hall. We mentioned the other night he struggled from the floor, and Ben Howland said of Greer, his timing was obviously off against Notre Dame. You just can't miss practice without it affecting your rhythm. Well, he hasn't missed a practice since last Sunday. 
And you'd never know by watching him play tonight that he has a bad ankle. That's Greer again. Oh, right way that way. up in the yeah. air. Yeah. I mean, the thing you think about is lateral movement, and can you push off it to get up and get up and off your feet? Greer fifth in career steals in Pittsburgh. Nearly had another one. Hunter up top, Sweetney. Riley finds Braswell. Gets the screen from Boomche Boomche and shoots from behind it. Yeah, he's a guy who's in big shots this season. They get up on Seton Hall, Seton Hall on the road, makes a big run, a game they would have lost a year ago, Georgetown. Braswell hits the shot to give him some breathing room. Nine points for Braswell. They come on 3-3 three -three as we approach the eight-minute mark. Pittsburgh by a point. Greer juggles the ball, but great hustle by Knight. Then the great look inside, but Braswell like a free safety back to deflect it. Riley, baseline. And you see, again, another instance, Bob, where it's not against the 2-3 zone they score. It's against the defense where they get out and run because of their D. First field goal of the night for the freshman Riley. Another timeout for Ben Howland with Georgetown up one. The second half, eight offensive boards for Georgetown, 21 for the game. So it's been a little bit better for Pitt here in the second half. This part of a stretch for the Hoyas where they're playing six times in seven games at home. Now let's take a look at the Bex Beer game summary. Pittsburgh shooting 47% against the nation's leader in field goal defense. And for Georgetown, it's a consistent theme. 22nd chance points, 23 bench points. So again, their numbers and their depth is what's making the difference for them. Georgetown holding opponents to 35% shooting for the season. Back to the 2-3 zone, so Georgetown continues to change looks defensively. Out of the Pittsburgh timeout, let's see what Ben Howland comes up with. No doubt, diagram something in that huddle. Coaches almost always do. They will selectively trap out of this. I think it depends on the spot on the floor. Rear baseline is fouled on the perimeter. It looked like the Panthers had set up the alley-oop to Page, but it just wasn't there, so Knight did not try to force the issue. Now we'll get a timeout with 7.25 to go. We've got a great one going in downtown Washington. drive available on the 3 Series sedan and sport wagon. Test drive a BMW with all-wheel drive at your local BMW center. The design and performance are unsurpassed. They offer comfort and best of all, this high-performance line uses up to 45% less fuel. The Lennox line of high-efficiency furnaces. Use Lennox high-efficiency products to save money on your energy bill this year. Check the yellow pages to find the Lennox dealer nearest you. Lennox, unparalleled savings, comfort, and performance. The Farrow family of dealerships have been serving families for nearly 40 years with great family vehicles like the Tracker, Chevy's compact SUV, the Chevy Blazer LS, a no money down lease for just $309 a month. Lease the 2001 Chevy Venture LS four-door minivan for just $339 a month. Or visit Barrel Oldsmobile, where select 2001 models are zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for one full year. The Barrel family of dealerships on Route 19 in Wexford and on the web at Barrel.com. Back at the MCI Center, Georgetown with a one-point lead over Pittsburgh. Other action earlier today in the Big East. St. John's at home beats Villanova by 12. Red Storm remain tied for first in the Big East. East Providence, a winner at Virginia Tech. Boston College also tied with St. John's for first in the Big East East. And Miami hands Connecticut its third straight loss. Following the timeout, Savatsky set three, his second three of the night. Well, Hawkins really has made some nice plays. Again, a little penetration, get by your defense. 
And he kicks it to a shooter. Hawkins, solid effort. 12-3 of the season for Zabotskis, who has eight points tonight, all of them in the second half. Braswell for three. Back wins it. Boomche Boomche with the rebound and foul from behind. It will be Brandon Knight with his third. We are at the MCI Center in Washington on a Saturday night, inauguration night in the nation's capital. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Jars Burke. We have 6.51 remaining, and Pittsburgh leads 11th ranked Georgetown, 58-56. Ruben Boomche Boomche with the miss. The follow is up and in by Big Mike Sweetney. Now, the only time this 2-3 zone has been hurt is when Georgetown's been effective getting to the glass. Similar story in the first half. Seven points for Sweetney, but his first two in the second half. You see, they have sent three white jerseys to the paint, and you're the checkout responsibilities. Greer, kick out to Page, finds Knight up high. Right side, Zabotsky for three. His third three of the night. Pittsburgh with terrific ball. Movement. Yeah, and Zabotsky, I think, started in the paint and then spread to the outside. So, nice job to find the open area. Riley comes right back with his first three of the night. Reputation is more of a slasher, but they'll take that jump shot. We're dead even at 61. This is turning into a classic between these two teams who are meeting for the 58th time. Zabotska's hands tonight. Maswell right in his shirt. Goes by him. Oh, my by Brandon Knight. Tough shot in traffic, and he doesn't have great size. Seven points for the younger brother of Atlanta Hawks guard, Brevin Knight. Hunter, baseline, Sweetney, up top, Raswell, into the lane to Boomche Boomche, who finds Hunter the cutter, but he doesn't finish. Well, that's the that's kind of cut I think Georgetown needs more of, though. You need to go ahead and be aggressive against his own. They've been real passive. Make some cuts. Make some dribble penetration. Five minutes left in a remarkably fast-moving ball game. Two-point Pittsburgh lead. On the right, Zabotskis. Hawkins set the screen, but Zabotskis comes up way short. Yeah, it looks like Bunche Bunche might have got a piece on the challenge. Braswell, penetration. Right side, Riley, three. They've all come in the second half as Ben Haller wants to do something to try to quiet down this crowd. Another timeout. It's amazing as a shooter. When you stick one, the next time you touch it, it comes a little bit easier. And Riley had stuck one on the prior possession, and Braswell, good kick, and he spots up. He looks down to make sure his feet are okay behind the line and sticks another one. Very nice. Georgetown with eight threes in the ball game, five of them this half. Now let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. Check this out. You need a good decision maker against the Georgetown defense. Brandon Knight has found guys all night long. This time he's got to go through four Georgetown defenders. Tough shot, smooth drive. One point Georgetown lead. La Jolla is one of two undefeated teams in the country. Only Georgetown and Stanford have yet to taste defeat this season. And Pittsburgh is giving the Hoyas perhaps its greatest challenge all year. Remember, the average margin of victory in these 16 wins is 20. When you think back to Georgetown over the last couple years, it's the close ones they've lost. Shot clock at six. Knight for three. Rebound Isaac Hawkins. Over Boot J. Wow. He knew he had to put a little bit underneath it. Another big play by Hawkins. That time scoring it. Hawkins now with seven points and eight rebounds. Baseline, Savage. Yeah, a long baseline gets behind the defense. Good aggressive move. Georgetown guards repeatedly is finding the open man along the baseline in the zone. Yeah, they're trying to attack up front. Why not? They've been most effective when they've had numbers down there. Again, the crowd coming alive. The crowd has been into it right from the very beginning. Spins by Riley. Kick out Page. Dribble drive. Oh, my goodness. 
18 points for the freshman from Buffalo. He showed an ability to handle it in traffic, Julius Page. It's a new career high for Page. He had 17 earlier this year against Robert Morris. Knocked out of bounds by Pittsburgh. 26 to shoot for the Hoyas, but first a timeout. 3.04 remaining. Pittsburgh with a one-point lead. Julius Page establishing a new career high. drive available on the 3 Series sedan and sport wagon. Test drive a BMW with all-wheel drive at your local BMW center. the MCI Center. This time it's Pittsburgh on top by one. Tonight's game has been brought to you by BMW Test Drive, the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW Center. By Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. And by Bex, a beer apart. Georgetown inbounds, wide open three for Anthony Perry. Rebound, Zabotskis had it taken away by Riley. How did Perry get so open for that one? Braswell gets the screen, pass into traffic, deflected away by Ricardo Greer, yeah. and stolen by Knight. Good reaction along the baseline, on the penetration. We've had a dozen lead changes. We've had six deadlocks. Biggest lead of the night was six. 235 remaining. Greer comes around the screen, spins on Scruggs, and finds Hawkins inside. He's fouled. Braswell and Scruggs were both there. It will be Braswell with his third. I love Greer's creativity. Because he has spent a lot of time around the bucket in his career, he bails him out here. They set a screen. It's not effective. Spin, feel the defense. There's the help, so go weak side. Good step two by Hawkins. Each team only with four fouls in the second half, so... Both teams have a couple of fouls to give. Hawkins fouled in the act of shooting. We'll get a couple. He's one of two tonight from the line. Oof. You take the roll any way you can get it if you're Ben Howard. This concludes a five-game stretch for Pittsburgh. Four of the five games against teams nationally ranked. The only one not ranked was Notre Dame, and Notre Dame just dropped out of the rankings after being there for 10 straight weeks. Yeah, I had him back in mid-December, and he was talking about this particular stretch of games, and he gets a win against Seton Hall. That was positive. This would be huge. 68-66 Panthers. Braswell, defended by Knight. Scruggs, lob pass down low. That one was in a drive. Well, they front him, and then Greer gives assistance from the weak side. Is he? Greer is so smart on both ends of the floor. Just reads and anticipates. Let's see if the Panthers try to milk the clock a bit at the two-minute mark up to Greer. Defended by the freshman Riley. Goes by him. Knight on the perimeter. And they'll bring it back out top. Zabotskis, ball fake by Scruggs. And shoots over Scruggs. Rebound baseline. Boomche Boomche. Now, now fundamentally checked out Boomche Boomche. 
Eighth rebound for Ruben and Braswell is fouled. Savatskis on the block. Ooh, he got bailed out, Mr. Braswell. That was not a good decision. You have numbers and you want to attack. That's fine. But Braswell, with guys who weren't in position, he just sees something evidently. A little change of pace to sell it. Ooh, hoo, hoo. tough one. His fourth five of the team. So the Panthers still have one more to give. Riley, it's rejected by Ricky Greer, who loses his footing. Otherwise, he might have been off to the races. But, I mean, this guy just comes to work every single night, plays the 440, and does a lot of different things. We've seen him make plays on both sides, comes out, gets a solid block, and <laughs> that's using your head. If Ricky didn't kind of break stride there, he might have been off to the race. Mm -hmm. Shot clock now at 20. Perry down low, sweeping. Works on Hawkins. Crowd wanted a foul. He bumped into Zavatskis, and there's no whistle. And with 1.13 left, it's Pittsburgh ball up two. This has been a pretty physical game. Zavatskis defended by Scruggs. Now it's Knight being defended by Braswell, who's fifth in the country in steals. And Julius Page comes up limping, and Fran Connolly blows the whistle with 15 seconds left on the shot clock, 55 on the game clock. What do they call it, timeout? Saw no signal. Evidently not. So Zavatskis to inbound in front of us. Knight with Braswell on him. Now the clock at 10. Gets the screen from Hawkins on the switch. He's doubled. Man's open down low, but Zavatskis is passed a little bit to the right of Hawkins, and he'd like to have that one back. Yeah, a little bit of patience would have done Zavatskis a little bit of good there. Just keep your composure. He had the time to make a dribble and attack and give himself a good passing angle. If the defense didn't commit, Zavatskis is a capable shooter. He could have taken a dribble in and gotten a look. There's the time remaining in the ball game on your screen. Pittsburgh by two. Braswell behind the back with Knight on it. Down low, Sweeten. Let's see if they double it. So far, they don't. Instead, he hits Hawkins with the block. Taken down by Knight. Shot clock off. All the way, Ricardo Green. And Georgetown gets a quick one. How about the attack mode Pittsburgh has in, been in since the outset of this game? Isaac Hawkins with the rejection. He's fourth in career blocks at Pittsburgh with 131. None bigger than that one. Well, I think he's made huge plays all game long. And why not on the defensive side against the rookie Sweetney? All ball. And it turns him the other direction. Knight from the guard position gets the board. Then he turns it. Now, you don't want anything but a layup. And if you're Ben Hallen, you're saying hallelujah for that one. Wide open. Georgetown, I think, stunned by the block. Doesn't get back. Georgetown has been held scoreless for the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Three turnovers for the Hoyas, and they've had two shots blocked. There's your game reset. Timeouts remaining. Two for the Panthers, one for the Hoyas. Georgetown still has two fouls to give. Pittsburgh has one to give, and the possession arrow aims toward the Hoyas with 19 seconds left, but Georgetown down four. And this is why it hurts you if you're Georgetown, you only have 14 fouls, because now you got to hit them quick. you got to be a very efficient offensively. You can go for a quick two, but hit, hit, and hit again, because you got to get them at the free throw line. It's going to take three fouls to get you there. And if you're Pittsburgh, you're saying defend hard on the three. Don't give up an easy two. Make them use some clock as you see Page being attended to. Pittsburgh only has 10 players in uniform and one of the 10 unable to play tonight. Jelimer Stavanovich suffered a high ankle sprain Tuesday night against Notre Dame. What was, it, what was the foul count for uh, uh, Pittsburgh before Georgetown shoots bonus free throws? Georgetown has two fouls to give. Does Pittsburgh have any fouls to give before Georgetown shoots? Pittsburgh's got one foul. So Pittsburgh has one. You can hit them here. And, you know, if they dribble, take some time dribbling up, then hit them. Make them take it out of bounds again. 
Keep in mind that the Panthers are dead last in the Big East yeah. free throw yes. at 59.4%. It could come down to that tonight. Make them use clock here if you can. Braswell, as quick as they come in the Big East, goes from one end to the other and loses the ball, but a foul will be called. And now one of the Panthers is down. It's Brandon Knight. He's rubbing his right knee. Looks to be okay. And Hawkins is down. Yeah, Knight's all right, but Hawkins might not be. Page coming back in. We'd like to welcome those viewers who are just joining us. We're at the MCI Center in Washington. Bob Picozzi with Doris Burke. 12 seconds left. Georgetown undefeated down four. Long miss rebound to Riley and a quick foul on the Panthers. They don't have any more fouls to give now. That foul will be on Greer, his second. And Braswell to inbound with seven seconds left, but down four. Yeah, see, those don't hurt you, except that the shot and game clock is stopped, and Ben Howland going to use the timeout, and he's going to set his defense here. That was Pittsburgh's sixth foul, so the next one will send the Hoyas to the foul line. With seven seconds left, it will be Georgetown ball on the side. The Hoyas at 16-0, one of only two undefeated teams left in the country. 16-0 represents the second-best start in school history. Well, I think the mentality of, of this Pittsburgh basketball team was right from the outset. Early on, Georgetown came with that extended pressure defense. They attacked it. They got easy buckets. Craig Eschrick had to go away from it. You see that this could be the first blemish. Pittsburgh at just two and three could even their conference record. Syracuse at 4-0 will play tomorrow afternoon at Seton Hall. Georgetown at 4-0 in the Big East. Best start in Big East play since the 94-95 team started out 5-0. Riley to inbound, finds Braswell with Knight on it. Throws up the three. No good. Rebound along the floor comes to Zavodkis. He's pushed by Lee Struggs. And the Pittsburgh Panthers are going to knock off the nation's 11th ranked team on the Hoyas home floor. A yeah, great team effort. You had Greer who made big plays on both ends of the ball and now again they had fouls to give Georgetown so Pitt just has to inbound it. Well, it's all academic with so little left. So it took Pittsburgh two years to beat a ranked team. That drought ending last Saturday against Seton Hall, it took them six days to beat another one. A solid team effort. They attacked from the outset. They got great first half play from Julius Page. Greer stepped up in the second half and was huge. So Pittsburgh evens its record in the Big East at 3-3, three and three, now 11-6 overall. And Georgetown losing for the first time this season, dropping to 16-1. 4 and 1 in conference play. Final Pittsburgh 70, Georgetown 66. Back in Washington after this. Looking into the Bears' eyes, Tom fired. The Bear didn't flinch. Welcome to Outdoor Life Magazine, where for over 100 years, sportsmen have pursued the big ones, the tough ones, and the sheer enjoyment of the outdoors. Call now and get a full year of Outdoor Life plus two bonus issues and a free gift for just 84 cents an issue at 79% off the cover price. With thrilling graphics, Outdoor Life brings you the tips, the gear, and the expertise to help you get more games, more fish, more satisfaction. There's also a few laughs, big adventure, and special local coverage. Call now and receive this mossy oak rain jacket to keep you dry when the weather's wet. It's yours free and save 79% on a year of Outdoor Life. Call now and see what kind of outdoor excitement is waiting for you inside every issue of Outdoor Life. The Sportsman's Authority. Call 1-800-839-7700 to get Outdoor Life plus your free Mossy or Rain Jacket for just $10. That's 1-800-839-7700. Bob Picozzi back at the MCI Center in Washington where the Pittsburgh Panthers have handed 11th ranked Georgetown its first loss of the season. Final 70-66. to Ricardo Greer, 15 points, 4 rebounds, 2 blocked shots. He's standing by with Doris Burke. Ricardo, we had the sense from the outset that this Pittsburgh basketball team believed it could beat Georgetown tonight. Oh, definitely. We knew we could play with them. I mean, we had a lot of games on the road that we didn't play too good, but we felt today was a big day. There was the only undefeated team them in Stanford, and we wanted to be the first one to beat them. 2-3 zone for most of the night. What was Coach Howland's thoughts coming into this basketball game with that defense? 
they were so much bigger than us and Boomche, Boomche and Sweetney, they were going to hurt us inside. So uh, we compacted us on and let them beat us from outside. We had a good chance of winning today. You've been through so much as a senior, Ricardo. You've had coaching changes. You've had key injuries throughout your career that you've had to deal with with other guys. Talk about what this means to you, given that career. I mean, it feels great. Julius Page stepped up. Denied us some big shots. Brandon, everybody played so good today, and it just feels so good to get this victory and show that Pittsburgh's for real this year. Your teammates, Isaac Hawkins, you talked about the other guys, but Isaac set some screens. He had some big boards. He even made some free throws. He was huge. I mean, Isaac brings so much to the table, man. I wish he was here. We was here another year, but we missed him a lot last year. And this year, he's stepped up so much, and we're just thankful he's with us. Offensive rebounds tonight. There were times when Georgetown just flat out had five and six looks at the bucket. What do you guys say to one another when that happens? Just keep strong. Just play together. I mean, that's so big, and we just had to play with our hearts, man. And all our guys today played so hard, and we're just happy we won. This was a stretch of games where Coach Hallen had talked about in mid-December where you had to play four teams that were ranked, actually five that had been in the polls. What was your mindset going back two weeks ago? I mean, we just felt that we, it was going to be hard, but we felt as a team, as a collective unit, that we can play with anybody, and we showed it today. Congratulations on not only a great game, but a great career, Ricardo. Thank you very much. I want to say hi to everybody in Pittsburgh. Do so. <laughs> Bob, back to you. He could run for mayor, Doris. 52% the Panthers shot from the floor against the team which leads the country in field goal defense. The Hoy is shooting only 40%, so that's the 11th time this year that Pittsburgh has held an opponent to 40% or less, and the sixth time in the last seven games, and certainly the big factor in Pittsburgh winning the game by a score of 70 to 66. So it's a big win for the Panthers in Washington. We'll be back to wrap things up from the MCI Center in Washington right after this timeout. wonder how some investors always seem to know what's coming. Barron's. It's how money becomes wealth. No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead, not one step behind. Subscribe now and you'll also receive this Barron stock evaluator free. It lets your computer help you turn money into wealth. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and the stock evaluator all for only $39. Call now, toll free, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. Hi, I'm Phil Mickelson. Everybody can use a good tip. Thanks, Phil. And I give my best tips only in Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the golf magazine. Information on equipment, the best places to play, easy to follow tips, and instructions from the best teachers and players in the game. Call 800-543-6200 and get your first issue risk-free. That's 12 issues for only $19.77, including this handy pocket tips booklet. Call right now and get this instructional video free. I'm telling you, it's the best tip you'll ever get. Bob Picozzi back in Washington, where Pittsburgh has knocked off Georgetown 70-66. First loss of the season for the Hoyas who not only fall to 16 and one overall, but four and one in the Big East. So they're now a half game behind Syracuse in the Big East in their division standings. And you know, Doris, earlier today, I couldn't decide who was the happiest man in Washington, George W. Bush or his father, but we have a third candidate. He's with you. Yeah, I think Ben Helen might be the happiest of those three. And Ben, there was a play in the first half that I thought set the tone for the entire game. Julius Page, the dunk in the face of Ruben Boomche. Yeah, it was an unbelievable play. You know, Julius has great hops. It really ignited our team. I think we were down about four or five points. And, you know, you're coming into a situation where we're playing one of the two undefeated teams in the country. Georgetown has a great team. And to, I, I think it really lifted our guys up that he came up with that big dunk right in Boomche's face because that really, uh, you know, made a statement for our team. And we really picked up our level of play after that. I thought the zone really helped us today. The 2-3 zone was was a big key for us. We haven't played a lot of zone this year, but it, it worked for us today. And, you know, they're so good and so big on the offensive glass. We, we were fortunate to be able to come out with a win because we gave up a lot of second shots. But I'm really proud of our team. You know, they hung in there. We're coming off a tough loss at Notre Dame. We're playing, you know, the, you know, a great program, great team in Georgetown. And to get a victory like this really is going to be a, a big uh, push for our program and a motivator for the rest of the season. You talked about this stretch back in mid-December with me. And yet you come out with two wins against two ranked teams. Does this help you turn the corner as a program? 
I think so. I mean, it's going to help our recruiting. Obviously, we're going to get some good publicity out of this win today. So, you know, kids up and down the East Coast are going to see this. And, and I think it's going to be a, a big-time win from the standpoint of recruiting down the road because, you know, we're a young team. We've got two seniors, and Ricardo Greer played a great game today. Isaac Hawkins did a lot of things that don't show up in the stats. I thought Brandon Knight really handled the pressure. I mean, they play great pressure defense. They really attack the basketball, and Brandon had nine assists, only four turnovers in 38 minutes of play. Really proud of his play. I thought Donatus Savakis hit a couple big threes in that second half, so everybody contributed tonight, and it was a great win for us. The 2-3 zone, you challenged their outside jump shooting. The only time it hurt you was the offensive board. Yeah, and they are unbelievable on the offensive glass. They just keep coming with big, long bodies, and uh, as Bob said, I think I am the next happiest guy to George Bush today here in uh, Washington, D.C. Well, well earned. Congratulations on a big win. Wish you best of luck in, in uh, Providence. Thanks, Doris. All right, take care. Bob, back to you. Okay, Doris, thank you very much. Congra congratulations to Ben Howland. Perhaps the most amazing thing, Doris, is that the Panthers not only shot 51.9%, but they did it against, what are the 320 schools that played Division I basketball. And Georgetown is number one of those 320 in field goal defense. On the year, the Hoyas field goal defense, 35.7%. And tonight, the Panthers shoot 51.9%. And I think more than anything else, it was the mentality that Pittsburgh came into this ballgame with. The fact of the matter is, Georgetown extended their pressure defense early in this ballgame, Bob. They played the full 94. What did Pittsburgh do to it early? They attacked it. They got some easy buckets. And Craig Escherick was forced to come out of that pressure defense, something that Georgetown is so proficient at. The next thing they do, they attack the 2-3 zone. They get in some gaps. They find shooters. They had a lot of different guys step up and play big. Last time that Pittsburgh had defeated a top 25 team prior to last Saturday against Seton Hall was January 30th, 1999. They beat the Pirates, but that was a win at home. This is, this is at a different level, beating... Georgetown, who, who frankly is better than Seton Hall. They've beaten them twice this year, but to do it at Georgetown. What's the most remarkable thing is, and you talked about this during the ball game, the fact that Pittsburgh doesn't have a tremendous amount of, of depth. And you talk about Georgetown and the fact that they wear people out with their numbers and their athleticism, but Pittsburgh, Torrey Morris came off the bench, gave him some solid support. Julius Page was huge. Jerron Brown gave him solid minutes. On the road in the Big East Conference, you've got to have at least seven guys to win games, and they were super at that. Only seven turnovers in the first half. We were saying that that was a remarkable accomplishment. They only turned it over six times in the second half. Well, you know that Georgetown's going to extend. They're going to trap in certain defenses. Their 2-3 zone they'll trap out of. They'll trap out of their full court pressure. They showed a 1-3-1. One, one. Everything they threw at Pittsburgh, Ben Howland's club had an answer for. Remember when he was at Northern Arizona, his teams led the, the country in field goal percentage and three-point percentage. He's a solid offensive mind. I think it showed tonight. And having said that, perhaps the biggest play of the game, the rejection by Isaac Hawkins in the final minute. I don't, I, there's no bigger play except for maybe the page dunk in the first half. It set the tone. They go down. They get an easy bucket. And Ricardo Greer, who's been sensational his entire career, had huge plays on both the offensive and defensive uh, boards. Huge team effort. Great win for Pittsburgh. Well, we love to chat, but Doris and I have to head for one of the inaugural balls. <laughs> Our car's waiting for us. So a tremendous win for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Leading the way for the Panthers, 18 points for Julius Page, 15 for Ricardo Greer. Pittsburgh wins it 70 to 66. Three and three in the Big East for the Panthers, four and one are Georgetown. For Doris Burke, I'm Bob Ficosi. Thanks so much for joining us. And so long from the MCI Center in Washington.